Welcome to Chris Parking Shooting Sports. Uh, we're, it's absolutely raining the sky out of the sky today, so I'm going to do some unboxing stuff because there's some new kit arrived. Now, I'll be honest, I have slightly started to open this because any new parcel from Blaza tends to be um, somewhat like, ooh, how should we say, dissecting a new alien species, and you've got to kind of figure it out as you go along and find all the little cut lines and where to go. But I think I've got it. I'll spin this round, and I say it's from Blaza, but I'm under the impression this is a new sour. So let's have a look and see which one it is. If I've managed to get this open without cutting any nerves, arteries, etc. So, Blaza Group there. I think it's going to be a 404, but somebody's cast doubt on that this morning. Yes, it is. It's a 404. So let me just pop this out of the way and get the bolt out, which is there. and just maneuver this box. And we're back in the room. So this looks like a 404 Ultimate Carbon, perhaps, but it's got the silenced barrel on it. So that is a fully shrouded, moderated barrel. Now, looking at this, it's a rather beautiful thing, is this rifle. And I first shot the Sauer 404 just after it was released. I was on the um, Zeiss trip in Ulfborg in Denmark, and I think that was 20, 2014, so it's a little while ago now. Uh, I've shot a few of them since, so I shall just have to uh, remind myself exactly of how everything works, because, you know me, I don't really like to um, get set up for these things. I like to remind myself. Let's just pop that magazine out. So it's a single column magazine that looks like it's going to be three rounds. I don't even know what calibre this is yet. It is... I suspect it's going, yes, it's a 308, so that's fairly easy to live with. Now, let me just remind myself about the, ah, yes, the bolt release catch is here on the side. So, theoretically, if I ease that up, that bolt will go in, and there we go. It's got a cocker, decocker on the back there, so if I cock that, that'll open. Right, I'm just going to pop that back out again and remind myself, because that is one, two, three, four. It's a six lug bolt, which will give us 60 degree lift. We've got twin ejector pins on there and a right side extractor claw. So I'll just pop that back in there. Now that is going to be a fast bolt. And with it being, it's all engine turned and it's a uniform diameter bolt with just a race weight in the bolt itself. So that will probably be impossible to jam. Yeah, I can't even jam it when I'm trying to force it out to the side. So that's rather nice. The silence, I've done a silence before on a Sauer. Was it a 404? I'm trying to remember. But these things, I've used them on a Blaser as well. These things are excellent because they don't really change the weight length or balance of the rifle. And okay, it's got probably a fairly short barrel within here, but of course that full length shroud on it does give a lot of volume to keep the noise down. Steel magazine there, that's probably a three round, a 308, and that will just go click in there. And if I remember correctly, Yes, there is a tool here because I will probably be able to take the front end off this rifle and show you some of its mechanics. Because, number one, let's just have a little look at that. That is beautiful carbon fibre. That looks very handmade to me. And although it's flexible there, it's very stiff in profile. And, you know, carbon fibre is a beautiful material because given the right engineering behind it, it can be made to do virtually anything you want at whatever expense you want. I think, yes, that is also in there along this assembly tool. So I probably struck lucky with that one. Um, I have actually got a spare one of these somewhere because I once lost one in the woods and then I found it years later. So I'll pop that back in. You can use um, Blaza Sour bipod systems in there and you can get the spigot that will slot in there, click in place and fit the, fit the bipod on it. But we'll just leave that for one moment. I am going to put that down before I lose that because those also act as the sling swivels. So pop that there. Now, I'm not going to take this one apart on camera, but essentially if you undo these three bolts here, take the lever down, do the barrels all come out and the lugs, because of the way they work, the lugs lock directly into the barrel. So the action itself is not a pressure bearing component. I suspect, um, 
I'm not 100% sure. I think it probably is steel, but uh, we shall see. Now, the other focus and the other product you can see on here, um, if I just pop this back down here, is they've got an adjustable trigger, and that will give me four weight settings in there, if I remember correctly. So I can set that exactly as I want it to operate how I like in whichever conditions I'm going to be using it. Again, this will all come in the full review. So, switch barrel capability, um, I suppose if you've got the ultimate silence, you'd have to have a load of other ultimate silence barrels because you're going to get used to having a nice quiet gun. And of course, the fore end is profiled to take that quite large barrel profile. The stock at the back here looks like we've probably got an adjustable cheek piece. I'll have to figure that one out because there'll be a control somewhere to move that, but it's separate from the stock. And because it is ambidextrous with that thumb hole arrangement, if you need it to be. And being a sour, that will be a superb trigger. It'll be single stage, and it's got a, a rib trigger blade, which is also adjustable. It's a rib trigger blade. I can't get that one out. It's a ribbed trigger blade, and it's also adjustable for position, both rotationally and linear, by the looks of it. And there's all sorts of serrations on there to make sure it grips in position when you adjust it, that would look like. Um, recoil pad at the back, nothing particularly spectacular there. Length of pull will probably be more than 14 inches, 350 plus millimetres, but again, that'll be for the full review, and we'll be shooting this and checking it. It's got the proprietary Sour 404 scope mounting system on it, which looks a little bit like a dovetail, but it's not. And i tell you what, let's just pop this back together for the moment, otherwise it looks a bit odd with me handling it without all its bits in position, and that We'll go back on there and click that back in position. Just turn that correctly. That goes like that. And then that little O-ring was on the back there. These are all quick release with you know a push button on the end to help me pop them in, pop them out. And there we go back together. Now, yes, they'll also have replaceable bolt heads on these. Uh, that looks like, I probably I don't know if I need to decock it or not, we shall see. That will probably go backwards. And that, oh yeah, that's lifts out that. So the bolt comes apart like that. Um, this is of course a 308 bolt face, it's 0.473 of an inch. I would expect you will be able to get different bolts, different barrels, and depending on the action length, etc., you can have different cartridges. But that, there's a little switch on the side there, that clicks back in there, and that, there is no play whatsoever in that. That's the single raceway down the bolt, which allows it to sort of sit on its um, anti-rotation and also the bolt stop. So I'll recock that again, and that will then go back in the gun. That brings me on to a little point, because a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between a safety catch and a decocker? And of course, blazers you get decockers on. Sour is, of course, part of the same group as blazer. And this also has a decocker, not a safety catch. Now, essentially, a safety catch stops the trigger releasing, but there is still spring pressure on the firing pin, etc., which can still strike the cartridge and make it go off. Whereas a decocker, like this one or the blazer one, well, that is actually releasing all the pressure off the firing pin spring itself, or the hammer in some case on some guns. So, regardless of the fact whether the bolt is operable or not, you can probably, yes, you can see on this one that I can, it locks the bolt when it's decocked. If I nudge it forward, just like a blazer, I can then open that safely without cocking it. But essentially, when you cock that by clicking it forwards, that is what is tensioning the firing pin spring so that, boom, off it goes. And yes, that is a very crisp trigger. I shall be putting all the weights and measurements on this when I do the full review, but it is rather light, yet still quite tactile. Now, there is another box here, so let's have a look and see what's inside. I suspect this is going to be the scope and some mounts. It's probably going to be one of the Blaser rifle scopes, one of the B2s. Blaser B2, yes, Blaser B2 rifle scope. And I'm hoping there will be also a mounting system in here because I certainly don't have anything in stock for one of these. Bars, bars, bars. Yes, there we go. So this has got a rail mount on it, 
which means that in theory, I don't know if this has been previously set up ready for me, it probably hasn't, but it does look brand new. So in theory, I can undo these levers on the side here and that will go on here. And those levers twist into position, fold over there. And there we go, that is the scope mounting. Now that's just straight out of the box. I will be checking all this, setting it up, making sure eye relief is correct and everything is to proper tension. But essentially, this is a brand new gun, that's a brand new scope and it has seemingly gone together very, very easily. So it does make life simple for the user, doesn't it? Eye relief is approximately correct actually. I'll just wind the magnification down on there. I'm stood inside my armory, so it's not that easy to see. I certainly haven't got a 300 meter range in my armory. That is actually correct for eye relief. So all I need to do is check all the tension, check everything's tight, I'll clean the barrel through. I'm just gonna have a look at that cheek piece and then we will go shooting with this rather nice rifle. So if you want to see the full review, hopefully we'll get it done well, I hope it'll be done before Christmas. I might even get it done before mid-November. But please like, subscribe, comment. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you can keep track of my weekly uploads. And remember, if you subscribe, that helps me put my channel towards manufacturers who supply the ammunition. And without ammunition, I won't be doing any reviews. So, thank you for watching. Bye for now.